Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is my TBR for Victober. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books and in the interest of reading some of those way too many books I am going to be participating in Victober this year but I'm going to be participating in it mainly from my shelves hopefully. What is Victober? In case you have not been on booktube for very long or you've never been here in the month of October before. Victober is where we read Victorian literature in the month of October. So quite simply books from the Victorian period from the UK and Ireland and that's about it really. So this wonderful event is hosted every October by some wonderful hosts and this year they are the same five hosts as last year which is Katie from Books and Things, Kate Howe, Roz from Scally Dandling About the Books, Petra Yu and Marissa from Blatantly Bookish. So those five have set us some challenges and all you really have to do to participate in Victober is to read one work of Victorian fiction or I suppose Victorian non-fiction. To celebrate I'm wearing my Sherlock Holmes as Cats t-shirt which I will put the link for in the description down below because it was from Spinster's Library shop. I thought I'd wear it for Victober because Sherlock Holmes is one of my favourite Victorian characters. So let's get into the challenges first and then I'll tell you what I want to read and how it might relate to the challenges because I suppose I already had in mind what Victorian literature I wanted to read before coming to the challenges so I've tried to make things fit as best I can. And then I do have some possibles, um, books that I might read, books that I hope to get hold of and then I also have something a bit different um, which is a couple of books that are set in Victorian times but are not Victorian that I thought I might <laughs> happen to read in October as a nice sort of link in with Victober but to, to read some modern fiction as well because otherwise I just tend to overload myself with loads of Victorian books and then I don't get through them all. So here is what the challenges are. Kate Howe has challenged us to read a book featuring a stranger or an outsider and I love that prompt, brilliant. Um, Katie's a very tricky challenge this year is to read a piece of new woman fiction and I had to look this up, luckily Katie has lots of advice on what constitutes this so check out her announcement which I'll link in the description down below. I do have something in mind if I can get hold of it. So Marissa has challenged us to read an author who is new to us and I really like this prompt. I thought that I was easily able to do it but then I remembered that the book I thought I was counting for this I have actually read some short stories by that author so I've changed my plans. Petra Yu has challenged us to read a first person narrative from the Victorian era and Roz has asked us to read a, Victor a work of Victorian literature in which class features strongly which luckily I think encompasses pretty much all Victorian books so should be okay there. The first two things that I want to read are like real definites for me. These are what I've had in mind for Victober for a long time, possibly even since last October. I have one buddy read that is planned in so this is a book I would definitely definitely read. I'm very excited for it because it means reading more Thomas Hardy. I actually read my first Thomas Hardy last Victober and it was The Mayor of Casterbridge which was the group read and I had an absolutely lovely time with it. I really really like Thomas Hardy's writing. I think it's brilliant, very sad but I really really liked it and I went on to read more Hardy during Misery May. Um, I read Jude the Obscure which is arguably his most depressing book. I hope it's his most miserable book because I can't take 
another book like that, um, it was too miserable. But I am hoping for less misery, but still some misery with this one. And I'm going to be reading this as a buddy read with the lovely Nikki from Red Dot Reads. We have done a buddy read every Victober that I have been on BookTube so far, and I have loved every single one of them. So I'm really looking forward to reading with Nikki again. And I'm really looking forward to reading this book, Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. So I think this is one of Hardy's most famous books. I think this one is about Bathsheba Everdeen and I think probably a lot of questionable life decisions that she makes. But beyond that I really don't know a lot about Far From The Madding Crowd and I really do like going into classics not knowing very much about them so I'm looking forward to doing that here. This is my absolute definite must for Victober. I will be reading this. I don't really think it necessarily fits any of the prompts. Possibly the one about class. It's not a new to me author. I don't know yet if it features a stranger or an outsider. Don't think it's a piece of new woman fiction either. Although there are examples of new women in Hardy. The other book I really, really want to read in October and I don't have any buddy read constraints on this one, but I do firmly want to read it. This is the read that has pretty much been planned since last October because this featured in my October TBR last year and it didn't get read because I was coming off the back of reading another massive book which was The Count of Monte Cristo, not for October and that meant that I didn't read this chunker and it's high time I had some more Dickens in my life. I haven't read any Dickens this year and I meant to read this to join in with Katie's Mega Dickens Along um, who I think read this in August and September so I'm a bit late for that but I really really want to read this book and it's Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens so I don't want to let another Victober go by without a Dickens so I'm going to be embarking on Dombey and Son. This will probably take me all of the month. It's a very large book. It's one of the biggest books on my bookshelf still. And I think this one clocks in at just under 900 pages. Very much looking forward to it. I haven't read a Dickens since I think early last year when I finished Our Mutual Friend. So excited about this one. So I suspect that this will fulfill Roz's prompt um, with class featuring strongly because Dickens does normally make a commentary on class. So I think that this will fit that bill. As far as I know, Dombey and Son is about Dombey and his business which he hopes to uh, pass on to his son, uh, whereas he neglects his daughter, I believe. I don't know much more about this and I don't want to, but I read the first chapter, I think, maybe two chapters at, in Victoria last year and I just wasn't ready to tackle another chunker, but I haven't really read a chunker in a while, so I think I'm good to go on this one this Victober. That is my other must read. I really, really want to get to Dickens again. I've got two more that I would really, really like to read to fulfil some prompts, and the rest are definitely just possibles. The first one that I definitely want to read is Cranford. I did think Elizabeth Gaskell was a new to me author. She's actually not because in my first Victoba I read her, I can't remember what they were called, something Tales. I haven't read one of her novels though and I'm going to read Cranford. This volume also contains a novella called Cousin Phyllis. Don't know if I'll get to that but I definitely want to read Cranford. Cranford would fit Kate's prompt book featuring a stranger or an outsider. And I think this will also probably feature class quite strongly as well. Again I don't really know much about Cranford other than it is set in the small village of Cranford and I think this is going to be quite cosy and gossipy and I'm really up for that. I think it will be a good contrast to the misery of Hardy, the chunkiness of Dickens. So we will see how I get on with my second foray into Gaskell and hoping to really, really enjoy this one. So the other book that I think I will read in Victoba, I don't yet have a copy of, um, I may get this from the library, may listen to it on audio because my library also has the audio and that is a book I've wanted to read for ages, Diary of a Nobody by George and Whedon Grossmith and this would cover a new to me author 
and also first person narrative. So it seems like the perfect time to read it. I think it's a very short book. I would probably prefer to read it physically than on audio, but I think it's gonna be pretty funny either way. And that, along with Cranford and Dombey and Son, are all on my 23 classics I wanted to read this year. So I would love to get all of those read. Diary of a Nobody, I think, follows a character called Mr. Pooter, and it's, what it says on the tin. It's his diary. I believe in the opening he doesn't see why people's diaries should only get published if they are a somebody. Um, why should not his diary be published? So I think that's the general gist. I absolutely love diary style narratives so I'm looking forward to getting to this one. Moving on to possibilities and I'm aware that the only prompt I haven't covered is Katie's about reading a new woman book and I just don't know if I will be able to get hold of anything that I wanted to get hold of for this. Looking into a lot of Katie's recommendations, the one that jumped out at me that I really wanted to read was called The Romance of a Shop by Amy Levy and I don't know an awful lot about this. I think it's about some sisters setting up a like a photography shop or something like that. I like the sound of it, I was really, really interested in reading it, but I don't think I can get hold of a copy from the library. I don't think there is an audiobook of this. And as you know, I am quite averse to reading ebooks. So it does seem to me that the probably the only way for me to read this, short of buying a copy, which I don't know if I will or not, is to read it from Project Gutenberg. But I I haven't ever really had good success with reading Project Gutenberg books because I don't really like reading on a screen. I think it's quite a short book so I might give the Project Gutenberg a go but yeah that is the main book that I would really really like to read for Katie's prompt and I hope that I can either get hold of it or read the Project Gutenberg. There are two other possibilities um, that are Victorian. One is I could read Silas Marner by George Eliot. This was sent to me by the lovely Emily from Novel Novels for my birthday. I've been tempted by this because I'm hugely intimidated by Middlemarch basically and George Eliot's larger works. I thought I would be better off starting George Eliot with a smaller book. Silas Marner is one of her smaller books. This is a possible for me and it would be higher up the list but it's quite new to the TBR. It wasn't on my list of books I wanted to read in 2023 and I just think this will probably be a Victorian book too far. But if I did read this I could also use it for Marissa as prompt of a new to me author because I'm yet to read Elliot. The other possibility was on my 23 classics for 2023 and it's Lord Arthur Savile's Crime. It's um, only a few pages in my collected works of Oscar Wilde luckily. I may even read like some poetry from Oscar Wilde because I do like to read some Victorian poetry as well. If I want to read something short I'm definitely going to go for Lord Arthur Savile's Crime and if I want to read some Victorian poetry I'm definitely going to probably tackle The Ballad of Reading Jail which is one of Oscar Wilde's famous long poems. I'd like to get some, to some Oscar Wilde again. So that's all of the actually Victorian books and I probably will have another TBR coming out later in the month to tell you books that I plan to read for book clubs and like other possibles. But the two other books that I would quite like to read that would be kind of Victober adjacent are The House of Silk by Anthony Horowitz. This is a continuation of Sherlock Holmes, authorised by Conan Doyle's estate I think. This has been on my shelf for years and I haven't got to it. I actually bought this for my husband for a Christmas present years ago and I don't think he read it or finished reading it either but I do love Sherlock Holmes, original canon mainly, but I also enjoy some of the adaptations. I've yet to really enjoy a book that was Sherlock Holmes stories by other people, but I have high hopes for this one because I've been reading the Hawthorne and Horowitz series lately. I read the first book 
and I would really really like to get to this so that's a definite Victober adjacent possibility as is my new book from Mr B's book club I got sent A Bitter Remedy by Alice Hawkins. This is set in Oxford in the Victorian era and I think tackles some of the sort of more taboo attitudes of the time. Yeah, I'm really really eager to get to this. Uh, I did go to Oxford last year and uh, excited to read a book set there as well as set in Victorian times. So that's also another possibility to sort of read alongside Victober. And the other thing that I found yesterday was a Stephen Fry podcast all about um, Victorian times and different Victorian things. I don't ever listen to podcasts pretty much so I thought that would be quite a fun thing to do during Victober to maybe expand my knowledge a bit of Victorian England while also reading all of these Victorian novels. <laughs> That's all for my Victober TBR. Do let me know in the comments, are you joining in with Victober? What are you planning to read? And do you have any recommendations for me, especially for the new women fiction? What are you going to be reading? I'd love to hear. If you have enjoyed this video today, please do give it a like. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now.